If you like biology, you might be interested in combining it with psychology. This collaboration goes by lots of names. Biological psychology, physiological psychology, which I like because of the alliteration, behavioral neuroscience, or cognitive neuroscience. The key distinguishing feature of physiological psychology is the inclusion of a biological variable. Either the independent or the dependent variable is biological, or both. In my master's thesis, I used pupillary reactivity as a dependent variable. I wanted to know if people's values impacted their physiological response to visual stimuli. The independent variable was an internal cognitive state, and the dependent variable is how much their pupils dilated. I didn't find any relationship, but the basic issue is at the core of physiological psych. How does what we think show up in what we do, and how does the body impact our thinking? When studying humans, there is in physiological psych a great emphasis on computers, MRI imaging, pharmacology, and mathematical modeling. Computers make it much easier to present stimuli with great precision. They can also provide puzzles and tasks for people to perform, while the levels of glucose, electricity, or magnetic patterns in the brain are measured. The emphasis is on the hardware of human behavior. Some study the role of the hippocampus in learning, neural network models on memory, or how specific neurotransmitters function. The brain is of keen interest, but every part of the body is considered fair game for study. Many of the most important questions of the day can't be directly tested in humans. You can't randomly assign children to families with drug addiction, disease, or social economic levels. But animal studies can look at those conditions directly. Baby rats can easily be assigned to parent rats with various levels of drug addiction or viral disease. Social economic levels can be approximated by varying access to food, water, training, and social interaction. With rats, you can track the progression of Parkinson's, Huntington's, or Alzheimer's disease, and then apply what you've learned to humans. Animal studies provide a broad range of techniques. In addition to electrostimulation, drugs, and brain imaging, researchers can disrupt normal functioning of a neural process, selectively breeding subjects, and genetically altering DNA. Individual probes, called single recordings, can be implanted, experimental drugs administered, and invasive procedures imposed. Animal studies allow random assignment by genetic markers, precise control of prenatal environments, and the study of multiple generations in a short period of time. In what is an obviously interdisciplinary approach, physiological psychology often combines knowledge of human behavior with biology, chemistry, medicine, and even physics. Practitioners are often skilled at surgery, mechanically and spatially oriented, and handy at building or adapting a wide range of laboratory equipment. The goal is typically basic research. Although not opposed to finding practical applications, physiological psych tries to uncover the structures and processes underlying behavior. Psychologists in this area often work with animals, mathematical modeling, or computer simulation. Their work often requires knowledge of neurology, genetics, and developmental psychology. Surprisingly, this is not a new area of psychology. At its founding, psychology used the methods of experimental physiology to study the processes of sensation. So it is no surprise that physiological psychology is still a major area of interest for psychologists. Some date physiological psychology back to Avicenna about a thousand years ago. He maintained that mood disorders were caused by the level of humidity in the skull. Here's how it goes. Happiness makes you breathe faster. Breathing increases the humidity in the head, all that foggy air you breathe, and the result is too much humidity, which makes it crazy. Others trace the connection between biology and psychology back to Descartes, only 400 years ago or so. He proposed that the pineal gland is where the body and soul meet. The small pine cone shaped gland, hence pineal, is the intersect between the intentions of the soul and the actions of the body. Although physiological psychology can trace its history back hundreds or thousands of years, it is much more based on the technology of our time. If you like biology, computers, and mathematical modeling, this might be an area you should consider pursuing. Clearly, we need all the help we can get to explain clinical depression, schizophrenia, autism, alcoholism, drug abuse, perception, memory, optimism, and happiness.